Hey, what's going on, guys? I um, I was going to drop some pictures in a, a long post about this setup, but I figured it would just be a little easier if I made a video just showing what's going on here. I purchased this plow setup. It's an Eagle plow. I believe it's a universal kit. How they come is basically two parts. It is a mount, which is this part here, and then the blade. The mounts are vehicle specific, ATV, UTV, whatever. I purchased this second hand and I believe this is just a basic universal mount. The mount consists of this rectangular frame with this hoop and a winch is mounted on it for the up and down action of the plow. The left right angle is manual. However, I have converted that to power and I'll talk about that in a minute. Initially, when I purchased this, the rectangular frame was too wide. It hit the wheels when when corn or when when the wheels were cut all the way left or right. It would pinch these corners. I wasn't sure the depth in and out what it was going to end up with, but I wanted to be safe, so I wanted to shorten that. So what I did was I actually sectioned seven inches out of this rectangle. Cut it here, cut it there, you know, up and down, blah blah blah. Welded it all back together. For the tube section, I actually cut it right around here. Then I put some slits in this section, widened it, cut some slits in this, this section, excuse me, opened it up, slid it over, welded it all up, grinded it, made it, made it fancy. Now, it's currently fully weighted, and oh, let me get back to the mount. So it's a club car with an aluminum frame, and I'll get to this side. You can't really weld to that aluminum frame, so I had to figure something out. So I built this little mount out of some uh, 3 16 plate. It's basically a 90 with a flat plate on the bottom and a little cantilever in the middle, which you can't really see. The bottom plate pinches underneath the aluminum, frail, aluminum frame rail, and then the top plate goes over the top of the little bull nose that it has in the front. There's also a cantilever a few inches down that rests on top of the aluminum frame. That acts as kind of like a stabilizer, I would say. Going back and forth about what I was going to do to mount this, I wasn't sure, honestly. Friends were telling me to do it one way. Initially, I was going to do three inch and a quarter hitches welded to that uh, 3 16 plate so it would have three mounting places and be nice and sturdy after buying those hitches I, it just seemed like a lot of work and um i decided to go with a, just a two inch receiver so i actually bought an extension a receiver extension so it gave me the receiver part and the tube part the bar part i welded that up with some gussets for supports onto that that bracket and um welded a plate of three sixteenths on the back of the actual plow frame and then welded the core the inch and a quarter receiver bar there's there's a couple things i liked about this this setup most importantly was i could transfer it to an atv or a small truck or anything with a hitch, basically. And, um, you know, if it doesn't work out on the club car, as it's, you know, it's a, a really a one-wheel drive gas golf cart with tons of weight in the front. If the traction was an issue, cut my losses, sell the setup, somebody could use it pretty easily as they just need a receiver to make it work. So, with that being said, plows up in the air right now. It's incredibly strong and really... With all that weight, you would think it would squat the, the crap out of this lifted cart, but it doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, it's a 6-inch lift on the cart with 22-inch tires, 10 PSI in the tires currently, and um, it's not really squatted. Um, so I'm happy about that. Now, the angle, like I was saying, was uh, manual, and I didn't want that. So... I rigged some standoffs up. I don't know if you can see those two standoffs with the, with the little gusset in between. To get the winch 
away. I'm going to get you guys a good shot because there aren't really any good shots of this online. Away from the mount and the winch for the up-down of the lift, which is here. You see the cable going there to that um, snatch block or pulley, whatever you want to call it, down there. That's the up-down. What I did with this is bound the cable on the winch for the left-right angle so that as one cable was letting out, the other cable pulls in. So essentially, you hit the winch in and, you know, it pulls pulls this left, tightens that, and lets cable out the other side. Opposite, same thing. Now, it's not done as I'm going to have to add some turnbuckles because of the slack in the cable. I wanted a, uh, I wanted some kind of breaking point, right? Like a fail safe, because I don't want to put, if I hit something or whatever i wanted a breakaway point um so i was going to use like um uh, the um share pins on a snowblower from a snowblower or soft loops tied to the corners or maybe eighth inch wire uh wire cable something that would break if i hit something hard um initially i thought that three sixteenths um Turnbuckles would work, but the first time I hit the plow, you could see what it did to a, a turnbuckle, a 316 turnbuckle. The winch is extremely strong and extremely fast. This can go from full right angle to full left angle in under two seconds. It's we're done. It goes back and forth very fast. And also the up and down pinches here, which I wasn't really happy about. You can see how this part hits this winch. So pretty much everything is done here except for a couple tabs that I'm going to weld here and I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. So I don't want to have to constantly be worried about smashing the winch together on the plow and all of that stuff. So, excuse my garage, it's kind of a mess. And um, let me grab one of these to show you guys. What I'm going to do is... I'm taking apart the controllers, the solenoids and everything, and you know they come with these little wireless remote things. What I'm using is a four-way, normally open joystick. So you hit it, closes the contacts, right? Left, right, down, up. I'm going to wire that up into the existing control. And then, to stop these things from hitting, what I'm going to use are... Basically, micro switches, limit switches. These are normally clo or normally closed or normally open, I suppose. Um, you can see there's a little roller. And that will cut signal, cut feed. So if I'm going left, I'm going to make it so this is going to pinch, cut signal, cut the feed power, stop the winch. I think I'm going to do something like, you know, something like this, weld a tab. You know, the tab, it'll rotate, click, stop the rotation. Something like that. Same thing over here. As it goes up, it's going to click this, cut the, cut the signal to the plow, stop. To, uh, stop to cut signal to the hitch and stop pulling in. Yeah, so I think that's it. Um, I'm pretty much done with all the fab work. I'm just going to start the wiring. I was going to just run some 4 gauge from the battery up here. I ended up getting some zero gauge on Facebook for $20, so I'm going to use that. What I'm doing is putting, um, so I have a negative, and I'm going to have a positive post here. Um, you can see it's, it's threaded in a little bit here, but these stick up. Ugh. Yeah, anyway, these posts stick up, so I'm just going to have the cables. Everything will come from here. 12 volt positive, negative. Then I'm going to have some um, five wire going up to the control as we are going to need um, a positive, a feed, 12 volt feed coming into one side, excuse me, 12 volt feed coming into one side, and then once you make this connection, you know, once you trigger the normally open to a normally closed, it sends 12 volt signal across back to the controller saying, Hey, let's do this. Give me, you know, 12 volt is coming in. Let's do it. 
So I need four wires coming from the plow plus a 12 volt hot to do that. So I'm going to use a trailer connector, a four pin trailer connector with a quick disconnect here. So it'll be the two solenoids with a four pin trailer connector, you know, somewhere up in here. So quick disconnect that, undo the 12 volt, take it out the hitch and she's good to go. Not sure where I'm gonna mount this yet. And this car is, I mean, compared to what it was, it's great. But this thing was in a field for years and it's a rat, but she runs great now. So yeah, guys, that's it. Um, wasn't really hard, it was just time consuming. I think it's gonna work though. Um, I paid $200 for everything except for the new winch. And um, yeah. That's it. I'll post some pictures of the other uh, odds and ends. Thanks, guys.